What in the hell are you waiting for? Kill me! Kill me now! <laughs> Have you all ever watched Predator and thought, man, I wonder what this would be like if you got rid of all the good actors, uh, replaced them, replaced the alien with some pizza-faced uggo dude, and then added Nick Cage to the bunch? Well, wonder no more, because today we are watching Jew Jitsu, a movie that uses more camera angles and fight scenes than spoken words, and it's, uh, it's not good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's go check this thing out, because this is Red Eye Reviews. Okay. So this movie had a budget of $25 a million, and Nicolas Cage was paid $5 million of that for just three days on set. And who would say no to that? I mean, certainly not Nick Cage. Uh, also, the movie grossed about hundred k in total. So yeah, not a, not a great box office release. We start with some buff dude running through the forest being attacked by flying discs. And despite them looking dangerous, uh, they don't appear to be capable of hitting anything or being any sort of real threat. You can apparently dodge them by just ignoring them. <laughs> Buddy, you could not have jumped off that cliff, like, literally any worse. Apparently, the man lived. He gets rescued by Nick Cage, who's out on a nightly, like, fishing trip with these two old people. <laughs> I don't know what he does in his free time. Oh, yeah. And uh, get used to this random colored subtitle stuff. And don't overthink it. No, no, no. No, it doesn't mean anything. Like every sentence just has one word in a randomly selected color means nothing. So he is brought to a local military base that appears to be run by, like, Peter Pettigrew. Like, I guess the post-Voldemort years have drastically changed his career goals. Get your ass out here and tell me what this woman's saying. Hey, woman, what you saying? But our military translator steps up. It's that one dude from My Name is Earl, which was a show that got canceled way too soon, and was actually pretty good. She said he has a hole in his temple. I think she said he got hit by a comet. But they take him inside and ask him who he is and what he is doing here. But here's the kicker. He lost his memory. Yeah, when he fell off that cliff in that weird contorted way and he hit his head on a rock. Uh, not, not all of it, though. Not all of it. Just enough to be super frustrating to talk to. What are you doing in Burma? Burma. Where's the other stuff? What stuff? I'm not sure. Did you sneak in the yellow cake, or are you in it deeper? Cake. For real, I wish I was in the writer's room when they wrote this scene. It's like, oh, okay, guys. So, uh, he lost his memory, right? But, but not all of it. Not all of it. Like, he knows he has hands, okay? He, he just doesn't know why he has hands. But he then proceeds to attack everybody in the room. He, uh has no idea why he wants to attack them. He just feels like he needs to. The girl agent steps in. She Arya Starks this syringe into him, puts him back out. And now, cue the best martial artist in this movie, Tony Ja, who's like, Tony's a legit badass, okay? It is sad to see you in this particular movie, but I like your stuff. Oh my god, that, that dude, that dude right there is getting fired. Dude, if you somehow, like, don't die soon, you're definitely gonna be unemployed. So Tony wrecks his way through the base. Again, none of them seem to know how to use their guns correctly. We gotta go. Let's go! Our dude knows him, but again, doesn't know why. He just really likes those flexy bro high fives. On the way out the door, the guy literally becomes the camera. 
<laughs> I don't know how else to say that. We we get some of this first person action movie stuff that we all absolutely loved from that one movie. Did, did you just get punched out of the camera and then crawl crawl your way back into it? Okay, yeah. Uh, this happens a few times. It's not nauseating at all. And he does eventually leave the camera behind and the two get away. And, you know, there's an explosion in the background for good measure. I don't, I don't know what they're doing over there, but they blew something up. They go out. They meet up with some other nerds who are all wearing capes and they look super cool. And we learn these are his friends and fellow warriors. But again, you know, he has dumb amnesia and he doesn't remember any of them. He doesn't even remember that his boss is Frank Grillo. Son of a bitch. They get in a fight with some other troops. And during the fight, they steal back our hero. You know, so more great plot coming our way. He said his name is Jake. He's still foggy from the shock. What do they want? You have to leave the area. Who are they? Why are they here? I'm pretty sure I belong with them. Ah, man, you guys, I love this. I'd have a whole movie of whatever's going on here. And uh, here's where it gets weird. So it turns out the invisible thing in the woods that chased us earlier is an alien. And it's here to fight people in honorable duels. So the soldiers all set out into the woods. They go to track down the energy source of the alien. And the variety of protective gear in this group is amazing. You got full hazmats, not doing anything. There's just some bros over there hanging out. This girl's Geiger counter is going through the roof and nobody seems to care at all. Eventually, our group starts getting attacked by the alien and we switch to another fun camera angle. Yes! Let me stand alive! No! Let's call me crazy! Call it in! Yeah. What the hell? Get out of here. You think? <laughs> I just like, I don't get it. The cameraman was like, okay, so we have a various list of camera effects and angles that we know how to work with. And the director was like, uh, yes. Okay, well, the which one? A all of them. The, the first first one. Any of them. I don't just film some stuff. Yeah, it's literally, it's just a dumb version of Predator because, like, this dude stays behind to challenge the thing. The biggest difference between that movie and our movie is our Predator is dumb as hell. <gasps> However, he's got multiple lives and his superpower is he can just heal himself. Oh my god, finally. Thank you, Nicholas. Save the day. You know, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to smarten you up. Must have made a pretty bad fall. He wanted you here. Who? Uh, someone in your situation only has two choices. I don't understand why you're fighting each other. The valley. The valley of the temples. You don't even remember that? It does appear that you're on the same side and you're both trying to draw the same conclusion, but you just can't seem to turn it off. My favorite part of this fight is at one point Nick Cage tries to whistle. That's a shitty whistle. Uh, a for effort, though. Jake? Come with us. Come on. Let them know we found them. Okay, ma'am. Uh, no. No. I can believe a lot of things. I can believe that an invisible alien uncloaking to get in a duel for no reason. I, I got that. I buy that. This guy being an interpreter and sucking at his job? Cool. But a mini arm bow? Let's be real, miss. That arrow fell like five feet in front of you. There is no way. Maybe I could get something to eat. Like, like a noodle or... Pickle. And the group heads out. Nick Cage has gone full Rambo on a season. He's just having fun with it. You know, why not? Screw it. Five million dollars. Three days. This was your plan, Jake. I had a plan. It was your plan, Drake. <laughs> Don't tell me. You forgot the plan. 
Yeah, clearly he did. The dude has amnesia. He has no idea what he's doing. Earlier, he thought he was the cameraman. You know, he, he doesn't know anything. You can't rely on him. But realizing we can't bring the cage along with us anymore because he cost way too much money, he's just asked to stay behind. So some of our various warriors all take their chance to fight the alien in honorable duels. I don't know why they have to be honorable, because, like, literally the alien can turn invisible and throw, like, stupid killer discs at people. However, he easily handles all three of these people. That is, that's what your face looks like? Man, no wonder you don't want to show us that shit. <laughs> it's, it's not a mask that's all jacked up, it's your face. And then while these guys are all dying, like we cut back to Nick Cage and he's just off, like, he's just camping. <laughs> he's having a grand old time. He's getting paid a lot of money, he's hanging out, he's cooking a fish poorly. I know that the spaceman actually likes you. I want to make an example out of you, prove a point, mess with your head first, and then he'll kill you. Brax has no use for a coward. He likes brave fighters. And while talking about this duel that he must do with the alien, the alien throws a dead guy at them. Amnesia bro holds out some hope for our fellow friend, and he checks his pulse, despite his head being cut open. <laughs> the rest of the group show up, and they're like, okay, I think it's our time to go get killed pointlessly by the alien. Also, if you forgot Tony Jaws in this movie, so did I. Yeah, but he's back now because, you know, he's got to fight the alien, too. Uh, I want to like it. I do. I'm just not into it. Like. You can't put Tony Jaw in a movie if you're not going to let him throw some vicious elbows into the top of their head. No. Yeah, don't do it now just because I asked you to, Tony. It feels too forced, buddy. It, it's too forced. Oh, real quick, because I guess there is some plot. The alien comes to Earth through a secret portal, and that portal can only be active when this massive comet is in the sky. And it's only here once every six years. I know none of you care about this plot, but it has one. There it is. But now with most of the cast dead or missing, we get the only thing we actually came here to see. <laughs> yeah, mess him up, Nick. Well, wait. Oh, right. Honor. Uh, honor. And to you, sir. Honor. Good day. How many times do we have to see his face? I don't care about his face at all. He's an ugly duckling. I mean, is it a face or is it a helmet? It's like a suit, but it's it's not. It sucks. But Nick starts to lose hard. He leans against his prop sword and it bends like a shit ton. But we don't care. Doesn't take me out of the movie. It's Nick Cage. He can look right into the camera and say, I'm Nicolas Cage and this is all a movie. And it still wouldn't bother me. Also, I, that wasn't a Nick Cage impression, okay? I can't do his voice. I tried. But now, with Nick Cage dead, uh, we learn something. You really don't know? He was your father. Screw it. Yeah, why not? Uh, Nick Cage is Amnesia's daddy. He punched his hands outside of a cave once. Of course, we all... We all remember that. It makes sense. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you two about to get on this hot ass temple. Oh, yeah. And, and this guy is here. Why not? Sure. We could use some terrible comic relief to, you know, really bring the train wreck together. <laughs> okay. Uh, alien, bro. Enough with the flying discs. <laughs> we, we know you love them. But have you killed anybody with these? The guy is literally standing still, and you're you're still missing him. 
But after this, the two face off in the final duel. Again, I should care, you know, but I just don't. I, I don't. <laughs> Smush face alien is dumb. This guy has early onset dementia, I'm pretty sure. Frank Grillo died like an idiot, and Tony Jaw only threw like two elbows all movie. I'm over it. I'm over it. And the alien's weakness was just punching him more. Of course, it's so simple. I did not think I could hate you any more than I already do, but the way you threw that grenade, it somehow brought you down even further in my book. Okay, thank God that movie is over. Some of them lived, a lot of them died. Nick Cage was the best part, as always, and it's over. So let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. We already know that there are excessive levels of plutonium there. We know this. Yes, we, we do know this. They don't know, but you know. We don't think the Burmese know about it. We notice. We hate us. We do this. We notice. Could it be the legendary prairie dog warriors? <laughs> and now here's some weird stuff that Nicolas Cage said. That's my favorite chair. I knew you'd find it comfortable. That's on you. I, I make hats out of newspapers. See the attention to detail? It's an art. Oh, ho, ho. get off my piano. You used to say the fight was worth dying for, Jake. Uh, I don't remember saying that. Oh, you don't? Well, you also said that you owe me a hundred bucks, and you said you'd give me back two hundred because you're such a nice guy. Ah, I see you know the ancient technique of slowly walking towards somebody and not moving your sword at all. So tell me this, old man. Will I end up like you? Well, it uh, just depends, really. How many movies are you willing to do a year? That is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the channel, like the video itself, and leave some comments. A huge shout out to the patrons on my Patreon page. All of you were amazing. You did vote on today's movie. So everybody here can partially blame you guys for what we just witnessed. I'll take 49% of the blame, but you guys are, you know, majority shareholders. If you want the power to vote on future movie reviews, head to the Patreon page. You can sign up there to do so. That link is found down below. My Discord community link is down below. And the merch store link is down below. I will see you all next time. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy. I make hats out of newspapers. See the attention to detail? It's an art.